Hey guys, yeah, we've been teeing it up all morning long. So happy to have Subversive Real Estate Investment Trust, or soon to be Subversive Capital and uh, special acquisition uh, company, uh, uh, Richard Acosta, CEO and director of The General Partner, joining us. Uh, good to have Richard with us. There he is. Uh, great to see you again, Richard. Welcome to the show. We're so happy to uh, have your time uh, this morning to learn a little bit about this uh, very, very unique uh, kind of set up and very interesting idea. Why don't you tell us, first of all, uh, about how Subversive came to be and, and really the idea behind it. Right. Thanks for having me again. Good to be with you. Uh, so we've been in the cannabis real estate space for about three years now, and we've been investing uh, in private structures. And uh, about a year ago, realized the best way to scale our business really is with access to public capital. So we launched a SPAC in December of last year. Uh, certainly took our time in aggregating the best assets, the best uh, footprint across the country that we could, and we uh, brought it to market about a week and a half ago. And this is a, uh, a very unique uh, SPAC in the sense that typically, you know, a special purpose acquisition company goes out, finds a separate private company and merges with that company and takes it uh, public. In this case, though, uh, we're, we're building a portfolio, Subversive is building a portfolio that uh, is going to eventually become the read. How did you how did you come upon that idea? Well, really, it was capitalizing on the pipeline, the brand, the know-how over the last couple of years. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think this is the first time in history of SPACs and REITs that anybody has combined the two and built a REIT de novo out of a SPAC structure. So it certainly has been a lot of hard work, uh, but I think it does speak to the need for capital in the industry. So we're happy to have a small uh, part of kind of the pie. There's a lot of action in U.S. cannabis, as you're aware. And we think we're coming to market at an incredibly interesting time, uh, right, given uh, what's happening on the political stage at, on a national basis. Yeah, so subversive primarily, uh, primary operations going to be in the U.S. Guys, if you want to look up the symbol SVX.U, there's also SVX.RT.U on the NEO exchange uh, here in Canada. SBFRF down on the OTC market, just so uh, everyone is aware of the uh, of the tickers. Talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, some of the infrastructure. Uh, we mentioned, you know, the the portfolio that is being constructed. Uh, where where did that begin, and what was the kind of concept behind uh, where you know you started building that uh, that portfolio? Well, look, very intentionally, we looked for the largest state markets, and we've always built this with really the eye of future proofing a portfolio. And what that means is we're going out and selecting real estate that we think will be relevant to the industry, either from an industrial or retail perspective in the long run. So that's taken us to markets like California, obviously the largest cannabis market that there is. Uh, it's taken us to very large scale assets like you see on the screen there uh, in places like Las Vegas, Nevada. What you see on the screen is the largest single production asset in the state of Nevada. Uh, and that's really informed our view is going after scale, going after assets that we think will retain relevance over the decades to come for the industry. And, and I love the, uh, the saying that you told me when we spoke uh, prior to the interview, uh, right from seal, uh, seed to sale. So that entire spectrum of the process when it comes to uh, cannabis facilitating uh, right from the, uh, the agricultural side all the way through to the retail side. Uh, has there been maybe one or two areas that have been a little bit more of a challenge than uh, others? Certainly retail. Uh, at the, given the, you know, the onset of, of COVID this spring changed, right? And what that caused us to do as we were building the portfolio is pull back potential exposure to retail that did not have delivery or e-com capabilities. So the, the very small retail uh, kind of concentration that we have, which in the portfolio is about 9%, uh, is really e-com driven. And we're looking for retail boxes in urban centers that have that capability to deliver to end consumer. Uh, the retail's challenge, no question, from a, a, just a general commercial real estate perspective. So we had to kind of uh, recalibrate our orientation toward it. And now some of these facilities, when it comes to the manufacturing side of things, are obviously quite large, as we saw with uh, some of those pitchers uh, in Nevada. Is that a little bit of a, a more complicated side of the business when it comes to finding, first of all, you know, a space that is large enough and then uh, finding uh, someone to, to take over that, that space? Certainly. It's, it's a very specialized use. A lot of things need to align. The, the requisite zoning, sometimes called the green zones, uh, the availability of utilities, these are very much 
uh, water consumers, uh, electricity consumers, uh, and, and that's really to maximize yields, right, and maximize uh, the volumes um, out of the cultivation facility. So it does take a bit of, uh, you know, alignment uh, of not only geography, green zone, but utilities as well, and of course, operational talent and know-how, right? We've been in this, in this industry kind of long enough to be able to identify who the key operators are out there, the better organized uh, and, and uh, most robust kind of uh, management benches out there. So we've sought to partner not only with good assets, but marry those with the leading management teams in the industry. You mentioned it briefly there, the Flower One asset and the Flower One uh, arrangement in Nevada. Why don't you tell us more about that, uh, that deal? Yeah, so look, we're big fans of the company, uh, big believers in Nevada. I, I spent um, a lot of my previous career in the private equity space uh, in the casino and the gaming sector. So certainly understand uh, that market. Uh, you know, look, we think that facility really becomes uh, the category killer for the West Coast. I mean, indoor cultivation uh, that is producing the most robust yields at the lowest cost per gram, I think is a winner in the long run. Uh, we went in with a first mortgage origination that we will morph into a sale leaseback where we will outright own the asset. Uh, but you know, given the challenges in tourism and the wholesale volumes in Nevada, it made sense to step into the transaction in that sequence with first a de-risk mortgage position for ourselves, morphing into a full sale leaseback. We, we speak very often about the cannabis uh, sector and the cannabis industry in Canada, but obviously uh, there's a lot different, uh, both regulations, federal laws, and then state laws when we come to the U.S. side of things. What kind of challenges has that raised uh, working individually, state by state, when it comes to finding both the manufacturing side of things, uh, property for it, and real estate for uh, the retail side of the business as well? Well, that's spot on. You have 50 different economies, 50 different markets. And the challenge for these operators in the U.S. is the, the need to replicate your infrastructure uh, in each specific market. So we've had to get smart about, again, the, the key markets that we've identified. Uh, and that tends to be sort of the more mature markets, as we call them, along the coasts, uh, certainly along the West Coast and increasingly um, along the coast, uh, for example, in Florida. Uh, so, you know, it, it is really a it's a local business, both at uh, a cannabis operating level and at a real estate level. So it has taken time to really get up the curve uh, on each specific geography and each specific market. Uh, it's, it's very different, obviously, uh, relative to the setup in, in Canada. Uh, there's, uh, we, we talked about a little bit briefly at the beginning there, but this is a very unique idea and a very unique concept. Is there actually competition when it comes to uh, subversive and building this REIT? Well, look, I think for, for financial services broadly in the United States, uh, in the cannabis context, there's, there are very little organized institutional platforms. And that's simply given the uh, Controlled Substances Act uh, still categorizes cannabis as a Schedule One drug. So it, it has kept folks away. It's kept institutional capital at scale away from the opportunity. So, you know, we were early movers on the private side, morphing now to the public. We've become the second uh, public REIT operating in, in the United States. Uh, the competition is tends to be hyper-local. Uh, our primary competitor out there that's also publicly listed tends to focus on a bit of a different uh, business plan, a bit more large-scale cultivation, maybe around less density. Um, so it's a big market. It's growing. We estimate the cannabis real estate opportunity alone to be over 15 billion today in, in size. Uh, and it's growing considerably. As you know, the industry in the U.S. is growing at you know, 20 to 30 percent CAGR, uh, which is which is incredible. And, you know, at a, the, given the backdrop that we're in here economically from a jobs perspective, from a tax generation perspective, uh, we think it's it's incredibly uh, great timing for us to be coming out with this platform. It's a, it's a great investment opportunity, I think, given the potential and expected changes from a regulatory perspective over the next uh, next couple of uh, you know quarters and years. Let's talk about that a little bit more. We have uh, obviously the big one coming up in November is going to be the election where we'll uh, we'll get some changes, no doubt. Uh, there are already proposed changes to uh, both regulations and laws in New Jersey and Arizona. How do you see that playing out, and how will that benefit the company? Well, listen, I, I think those changes, those state-level changes, clearly uh, grow the pie. They grow the opportunity and the demand. 
So th those in and of themselves are, are fantastic events. They will provide more opportunity for us and as they will for our underlying tenants and partners. I think the, the more interesting shift uh, that potentially comes is changes at the federal level that really uh, open up all markets uh, in a more scaled and, and quick fashion. I think at, at a state level um, and even at a hyper local level here, you know, we're based in Los Angeles here in Orange County, you have a series of very uh, you know, conservative municipalities opening up potentially for the cannabis use this fall, right? They need the tax dollars, they need the job production given kind of what's happened over the, you know, since spring of this year. I think that's a microcosm really for the long-term momentum that is building at a national level when you think about unlocking the potential of this industry. You, you spoke a little bit about the uh, e-commerce side kind of picking up when uh, the pandemic started earlier in the year. Has there been any, uh, you know, challenges because of the pandemic this year when it comes to the real estate side of things? Look, certainly I think generally for real estate, uh, financing is harder to come by. Uh, I think folks are not as inclined uh, to put assets up for sale. I think price discovery is still something we're working through in commercial real estate. Um, so, so the velocity has slowed a bit. The availability of financing has tightened a bit as well. Uh, we are uniquely able uh, to tap commercial banks, by the way, given the location and the sort of the underwriting criteria that we put our assets through. So that has tightened a bit, but you know, I think for the right assets, uh, for the right underlying operators, uh, that financing is still there. I think generally for real estate, I think retail opportunities uh, will really begin to emerge. Storefronts that become available due to restaurants, let's say, um, or similar uses sort of having the turnover. So I think that's something we're watching. From an industrial perspective, uh, as you know, there's incredibly robust demand, right? Uh, we all have, uh, I think, multiple packages being thrown over our fences, right, every day due to Amazon and e-com. Uh, so the demand for industrial, specifically infill industrial, I think is, at, is as robust as ever. And, you know, we're able to identify assets that generally overlap with those industrial needs but have the cannabis twist on them from a zoning perspective. Uh, that allows us to capture those outsized returns for our investors. Richard Acosta, CEO of Subversive Capital. Uh, coming up maybe in the next six months or so, even a year, we'll go out. Uh, what do investors need to know when it comes to uh, maybe the next kind of landmarks that the company is looking at? Well, listen, we, uh, we are looking to scale with our current partners. We've partnered with uh, the leading tenants and operators in the country. We're looking to help them you know, replicate again their infrastructure in new markets as those open up. I think you'll see us, you know, raise additional capital on a public basis and continue to deploy it in, in very interesting markets. Um, so, you know, we're, we're excited to uh, to come back, uh, you know, and hopefully in three months to give you that, that more fulsome, exciting update. Yeah, please, uh, please do. Absolutely. Uh, come back and uh, give us an update. Richard uh, Costa, CEO of Subversive Capital, soon to become Subversive uh, Real Estate Investment Trust. Very unique uh, situation, very unique story. Uh, gathering the portfolio of assets uh, in the cannabis real estate industry to become uh, REIT through uh, a SPAC, which is uh, the first of its kind that, uh, that uh, we know of anyways. Uh, SVX.U, guys, here in Toronto on the NEO Exchange, SVX.RT.U, the tickers, and SBFRF down on the uh, OTC. Uh, great to speak uh, with you this, after, or this morning, Richard. Uh, as we said, please uh, come back. Give us an update in the, in the near future. Will do. Thanks for having me. There you go, guys. Uh, a look at subversive capital and uh, a real estate investment trust in the cannabis sector, or soon to become a real estate investment trust in the cannabis sector. Guys.